Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is Alan. We really like to talk a lot about how much sci-fi storytelling and world building influences the next generation of artists, scientists, and engineers. Because without our dreams and creativity, why bother trying new things and pushing the envelope of what is possible? There's no better example of the fictional world blending into the real one than when architects take influences from what they've seen in sci-fi films and TV shows and try to recreate those images in real life. And so today we'll be taking a look at a list of buildings and construction sites in the real world that are actually based off of things that come from science fiction. When I first saw the prequel Star Wars films, I was awed by the planet-wide city of Coruscant. It was immediately a place that I wanted to explore, or perhaps more aptly go spelunking in the massive canyons and underground tunnels that ran through this infinite city. At the heart of Coruscant lay the Galactic Senate, perhaps one of the most impressive buildings I've ever seen in science fiction. And it's not just about the exterior, but how the interior is designed with a heavy focus on both form and function. This giant senate chamber was the epicenter of the Republic's democracy and therefore it was arranged symbolically like the galaxy it controlled in a gigantic voluminous sphere. The representatives were arrayed all along the outside of the sphere. This positioned potential allies, enemies, above, below, and to the sides of your own platform, reminding us of the very 3D nature of space. All of the representatives sat in pods which could move around on repulsor lifts, whoever had the floor and gravitated towards the center of the room. Which makes sense because the core of the galaxy was always where the most important decisions were made. Now, out of all the buildings on Coruscant, I'd never imagined that the Senate would be the first one to be replicated here on Earth. A company called Oma Cinema has launched a very peculiar looking movie theater in Paris that many have said looks exactly like the Galactic Senate. Instead of having stadium seating, all the theater goers will be placed in small pods just like the ones we see the representatives use in the Galactic Senate. Now these pods will most likely be stationary because anti-gravity technology is not a real thing yet, but the designers of the theater have said you can customize how many pods you want in a row and how many seats are in each one. The idea behind the concept was to create a drastically different theater setup that maximizes the experience of the viewer by giving them an epic and immersive platform to watch the movie from. This means that each pod or box will have VIP services including drink and food delivery on demand. It's probably also going to be a lot easier to social distance on these pods as compared to a more normal, you know, packed in auditorium style theater. But of course, with this whole pandemic killing the movie industry, which let's be honest, wasn't doing all that well even before COVID hit, who knows if OMA Cinema is gonna be able to pull off their Paris opening in 2021. No one knows how financially feasible this model is, but I don't really care. I'd love to go in front of a crowd of Parisians standing in a pod and telling everyone how much I love democracy. Now, I'm not a Trekkie. British Ben is one which actually means I still don't understand what it means to be a Trekkie, but what I do appreciate is a very epic and elaborate act of nerdiness. Liu Dejan, chairman of the video game developer NetDragon Websoft, has turned the HQ of his company into a massive Federation starship. This 260 meter long and 100 meter wide structure cost the company $97 million, and it's very reminiscent of the sovereign class USS Enterprise NCC-1701E. Although it should be mentioned, the sovereign class is roughly 650 meters long and mainly made out of advanced metal alloys and not concrete and rebar. The interior the interior of this ship office features automatic sliding gates between working areas and even has a 30 foot metal slide which goes from the third floor down to the ground. What's even more interesting is that Leo Dejan also contacted CBS before starting construction and licensed the likeness of the Enterprise for their project. CBS initially thought this request was a joke until they saw all the related legal documents for the project. I think this is a great leap forward for Chinese corporations respecting intellectual property rights. Now we're going to head back to a galaxy far, far away to a nearby city called Singapore where George Lucas has his Asian headquarters for Lucas Films, or, well, he used to. 
In this 22,500 square meter campus, Lucas decided to erect a gigantic building that is very reminiscent of a sand crawler. That's the gigantic moving fortress the Jawas frequently use for their scavenging operations in A New Hope. Unlike the actual sand crawler, which drastically lowers property values in the neighborhoods it appears in, this gorgeous Lucasfilm sand crawler building is only going to improve the image of this already modern and luxurious Asian city. Apparently, there was even a Jedi Masters program located in the building, which was for young artists who wanted to intern with Industrial Light and Magic or Lucas Arts. And unlike the actual Jedi, these interns were actually paid for their work. Now that Disney has taken over the whole operation, who knows what's happening inside and whether all those young Jedi have now been Order 66. The dystopian novel 1984 by George Orwell has become one of the most important warnings for our society against the consequences of totalitarianism, mass surveillance, and just general repression and control from an overbearing government. One of the most iconic buildings from the film is the Ministry of Truth, which is the center of all government propaganda, which rewrites historical events and promotes the spread of this new language known as Newspeak. In the film version of 1984, the Ministry of Truth is modeled after the Senate House, an administrative building from the University of London. During World War II, the Senate House was actually used by the Ministry of Information, a UK government department responsible for publicity and propaganda, which is kind of a cool film to real life connection. But in the book, the Ministry of Truth is a lot more impressive. First, it's 300 meters high, it's made completely of concrete, and it's in the shape of a giant pyramid. Which makes me immediately think about the Doom Hotel in Pyongyang, North Korea. The Doom Hotel, which is officially called the Ryugyong Hotel, is around the same size as the fictional Ministry of Truth. And instead of being made out of concrete, it's covered mostly in glass panels, some of which have LED displays built into them. The Hotel of Doom officially started construction during the reign of Kim Jong-il in 1987. It was supposed to be the world's tallest hotel, but construction halted in 1992 due to economic crisis caused by the collapse of the Soviet Union. And so instead of being the world's highest hotel, the Doom Hotel became known by the Guinness World Book of Records as the tallest unoccupied building instead. Construction finally resumed in 2008, but the building has missed several opening deadlines and to this day is still not open to the public. While the Goringa Hotel is not a part of Korea's Ministry of Truth, it is an integral part of the country's propaganda effort to make it seem like a less crappy country than it actually is. On a side note, True Korea's actual propaganda office is called the Propaganda and Agitation Department, which is a much more truthful name than the Ministry of Truth. Iraqi British designer Zaha Hadid was known as the Queen of the Curve for her extremely beautiful and free-flowing architectural works, which included the new Dashang International Airport in Beijing, along with the Al Wakra Stadium in Qatar that will be hosting the 2022 FIFA World Cup. Now, during her very illustrious career, Zaha Hadid only designed one personal home, and she did it for the man she calls the Russian James Bond. Businessman and philanthropist Vladislav Theronian. You might know him from his luxury hotel and resort brand name, Amman. While most of designer Zaha Hadid's buildings have very Mon Calamari-like features, the house she builds for Vladislav Doronian is more imperial in design. As a matter of fact, at the center of the structure is a raised bridge platform that wouldn't be out of place on an imperial-class star destroyer or maybe a Venator-class star destroyer. The property is known as the Capitol Hill Residence, and it's built in the Barvika Forest near Moscow. Set 22 meters off the ground, the bedroom on the top floor is designed to give the owner a sense of freedom every morning when they wake up. So there you have it guys, five very interesting structures that kind of pull you in and make you feel like you're in some kind of sci-fi universe. I really love that whole blend of reality and fiction. Anyway guys, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. And as usual, my name is Alan, reminding you that life is a movie and you are the protagonist.